the participation of the OBC, what you call present OBCs, yeah. uh, for the first time in the celebration of the 200 years of uh, Peshwa victory. That I think so has infiltrated the society, uh, not the society, but some of the fringe elements right. within the Hindu religion. Till yesterday, I would say it was said that the Mahars only fought for it. Right. But we, for the first time, we brought about the history that the Mahars were very large in number. Right. That's true. But along with that, they were the OBCs, yes. they were the Marathas who were harassed by the uh, Peshwas yes. and they also joined yes. in the uh, war against Peshwas yes. as Kerwa, uh, at Bhima Korega and where the whole army won the war. Right. For the first time the history was told in a proper sense okay. and therefore uh, the relatives and also the community people from those who participate, they came in a very large number. Uh, normally, you can say last year when the celebration was there, the uh, government figure says that it was just about a lakh. Right. But this year the figure was of 5 lakhs. Okay. So the participation of the, along with the Dalits, the OBCs was a large number. Right. And this, I think, so many people thought, uh, many of the fringe organizations, basically the Hindu organizations, yeah. uh, thought that this is a shift yeah. and therefore they attacked, okay. bringing in again the element of uh, fears yeah. and fear and as well as uh, suppressing the whole uh, movement itself. Yeah. So that was the issue uh, and therefore uh, when there was no action from the government. On the third when we gave a call, it was absolutely um, a non-violent band. Right. After three o'clock the violence started and that uh, that is where we, we are blaming all political parties. Right. That after three o'clock when they saw that the band is peaceful, peaceful. without any incident, yeah. it is then then the political parties uh, saw to it that there is violence and uh, the band is damaged, yeah. politically damaged that it was uh, not a silent uh, band but a violent band. Right. So that's what it is. Yeah. Now what we are wit witnessing at the present stage and where, the, where we have been able to brought out uh, things before the Hindu mass, basically we are addressing the Hindu mass. Um, those who believed in uh, state having Hindu as a religion. And those who are in the forefront of propagating this, preaching this, we are now showing what is their real color of these people. Yeah. They have, when they would attack the Muslims, yes, they would say it was not our issue. When they attack the churches, it was not our issue. When they attack the uh, Shadul caste, we said it's not. But now they have started attacking the Hindus themselves. Right. Yeah. So, this is not an attempt for them to convert this country into a Hindu country, but they want to convert them, convert this country into a Vedic religion country. And Vedic religion country, when they when they say it, they say that the whole constitution and the system should be based on Manus Murti. And the Manus Murti is an is a is a very clear example of an inequality system in this country, and where everybody fought for it. Uh, so this is now, I think, so becoming a larger picture. Those who have taken part in this carnage, with the relentlessly the Supreme Court pounding on them, yeah. for the first time the Prime Minister, uh, while paying homage to Shivaji Maharaj, posted his photo along with Sambhaji Bhire, uh, Sambhaji Bhire who is one of the accused. Yes. It's now basically uh, very clear a message to the Supreme Court that he is my colleague. Yeah. Now it has to be seen whether uh, this message, indirect message which has been sent, the Supreme Court will take its stand, I am very sure about it. But for the masses, it is very sure that this Prime Minister is shielding the, car, the person responsible for the carnage. Right. Therefore, human beings have no value. Yeah. What the Prime Minister's uh, poster with 
संभाजी बिड़े इज नाउ इंडिकेटिंग दैट ह्यूमन ह्यूमन बींग्स हैव नो वैल्यू इट इज आवर आइडियोलॉजी दैट इज गोइंग टू हैव वैल्यू बिफोर दिस आइडियोलॉजी एवरी एवरी ह्यूमन बींग हैज टू बाउ डाउन इफ ही डजन बाउ डाउन दे बी ए कार्ज सो यर लाइफ हैज नो वैल्यू दिस इज वॉट द मैसेज Yeah, this is. Yeah, I see this as a counter-revolution. No, you see, now this is a challenge not just be between the Buddhist or the Dalit movement. It's not a challenge before be, for the whole, for the whole Hindu mass. I must say so. Whether they would like to have a freedom which they enjoyed for last seventy years, or whether they would like to have a caged life. and in and in any case life your your life has no value you may be even put to death and there is nothing which is going to happen to you now this is where the hindu mass has to answer whether you would like to have the 70 years freedom which, which this constitution gave them or whether they would like to have a manuva manuvad system where they are going to be caged and individual life has no value this is what the hindu mass has to give it's not just the dalits uh, or the christians or the muslims or the buddhist or the sikhs who it's a hindu mass who has to say whether he would like freedom or whether he would like a caged life that is what it is see this is what is going to happen uh, in fascism this is a fascist fa by a democracy the manner in which hitler came to power he came to power by democracy then he abolished democracy and he became a dictator and a fascist in the world it's a same process which has been started the only difference between is that hitler didn't give a chance to the people to have a have a second election where they could have thrown him off right here people have a chance of a parliamentary elections where they have a chance of throwing this government off but what they are saying is that we are returning back to power and from 1922 we will have a manuvad system coming because that is the year when they will have absolute majority in parliament in absolute majority in rajya sabha that is what they are propagating they said uh, unless and until we have uh majority in both the houses we can't change the constitution see my larger population as i have said earlier that whether you would like to be a free citizen or whether you would like to be a caged citizen if you would like to be a caged citizen then vote for bjp if you would like to remain as a free citizen then vote against bjp it's absolutely clear even when in the 80s and 90s um when there was an absolute majority of the congress um, during rajiv gandhi's period the democracy was also smothered even in that period i played an important role the, along with the pp singh uh, chandrashekar uh, ramkrishna hegde i was in the forefront i was not it's not that i was not there in the forefront uh whenever there is a demand for a demand for a situation where uh, something is to be saved i have always been there uh, i don't believe in petty politics and uh, be hanging around uh, in power so uh, whatever little experiments were needed to be done for the society to understand and change yes i restricted myself to maharashtra but i never gave up a national politics now uh, at the present stage there are very few individuals who are ready to take on the present government and um, one of the fear which people have is uh, that we will be hit back either by income tax either by uh, ed or by cbi or ib um, some inquiries will go on so why we so why get into the wrong box of the government but being in politics for last uh, 30 30 more than 35 years uh i have kept myself away from all these vices and um, therefore you can say 
uh, I am uh, in a better position to take on the present government than many of the political leaders. All the best for you on this challenge. Thank you. Thanks a lot.